Everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series, Neo Geo Nostalgia, where I like some of my favorite Neo Geo games of all time. Today I have a fun treat because we're going to be playing Xeno Crisis on the Neo Geo CD. I love being able to get new Neo Geo CD games, and if they're as good as Xeno Crisis, I'm always happy. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, down below hit like and subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But I remember following the development of Xeno Crisis, and obviously it wears its inspiration on its sleeve, because this reminds me of Smash TV. And if you remind me of that game, you know we're in for a great time. But there's definitely different inspirations, at least as far as I can tell, because if that transition screen is not inspired by Tatsujino, I would be shocked. But what you're getting here with Xeno Crisis, it's one of my new favorite Neo Geo CD games just to put on and play, because it's so easy to pick up and understand, but this game is quite difficult and it's going to keep you coming back for more and more. That's what I really love about a good new game. It's very easy to learn and it's incredibly difficult to master. And I am playing this on easy. Once you get to hard mode, this game becomes wildly difficult in the best way possible. The same sort of difficulty as a bullet hell shmup. But it's just so fun to see new Neo Geo CD games out there because you do get AES and MVS releases relatively frequently, but it's not every single time do we get a Neo Geo CD game and big marks for using the classic art for the Xeno Crisis logo right there. But again, this is the type of game that feels like you're right back in a 90s arcade. I love these 8-way shooters and basically how the mechanic works is if you hold down the shoot button, you've locked your character into the aiming, but the A and the C button will rotate in degrees both left and right. You have a dash button and a grenade as well. It's all the moveset that you would expect. And I will say graphically, I absolutely love the appearance of this game. It's so much fun to get a darker, more sort of horror sci-fi aesthetic. And like I said, if you do want to play this on the Neo Geo AES or MVS, Bitmap Bureau has you covered there as well. Of course, I have both because anything Neo Geo, I definitely want on my shelf. But the nice thing is too, I did test this on Mr. FPGA on the Neo Geo Core, and it works spectacularly, and you can just get ROMs for it as well. So if you're not the type of collector that wants to put these things on yourself, but you want to play it, you can 100% easily do that, and that is awesome. And I like that we get just enough story to feel like we know what's going on, but not too much story so that it still feels like an arcade game. But the great part is, in between each round, you'll see we were picking up dog tags in the stage. You were able to increase your character's power in whatever way you see fit. And trust me, you're really going to need these upgrades later on in the game. When there's 20 or some odd aliens on screen at once and you need to shoot at them all, you're going to want that extra life and that extra ammo capacity. Because you will see me picking up ammo canisters. You can run out of ammo for your primary gun, and you do not want to do that. The game always gives you ammo when you need it, but sometimes it's not in the place that you really want to be. But the biggest thing about Xeno Crisis and these types of games in general is screen space management. And the manual does give you some tips and tricks on how to deal with the controls and everything like that, and high marks for a full color manual as well. But knowing where your opponents are, knowing where you are, and knowing your escape routes is so incredibly important. You do not want to back yourself into a corner. But that's why this game is so much fun, and this genre is so much fun, is it really is pure reflex and strategy. Learning how the characters move, learning your safe spaces, and knowing how to navigate around, or in that instance, running directly into an alien and not navigating around well. You do have a melee button as well that will get you out of some jams. But the best thing to do is to not get in the jam in the first place because that melee is not a free escape. You really have to be good on your timing. But again, I just love this environment, this dark blue, the green, kind of those lighter aqua colors. It really does make an environment that's living and breathing and feel really fresh. And it looks outstanding on my RGB Neo Geo CDZ. But the other thing I love about this game so much is the soundtrack. It's absolutely a banger. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds or so, and I'll come back and talk more about the game. Enjoy.
Absolutely awesome soundtrack that kind of mixes rock with some John Carpenter style synth right there. Now that we've beaten the boss, we're going to go back over to a little bit of the story. And I do appreciate what the story does, and I love that this alien here is just getting his neck wrung. Although I will say he looks kind of cute and maybe a little scared, so maybe once you defeat them, they become your friends kind of like a dog. That's just a complete joke, but that's kind of the vibe he has going for me here. But again, power-ups are going to be your friend. You get enough dog tags in a stage to usually get two, if not three, power-ups. And I love maximizing speed, health, and ammo capacity. Those are the three that really do it for me. But the game is intelligent with its enemy design as well. Now that we're in the dunes, you get this kind of dune slash tremor sandworm coming up from the sand. And suddenly, the enemy patterns and movement are completely different than what you saw before. It gives you a new look and it keeps things fresh because mostly, we've just been dealing with aliens that rush right towards us. But again, amazing artwork in this level. I like that we're in a brighter environment now. If we take a quick peek at that AES box as well, the artwork for this game in general is just absolutely spectacular. I love all the colors and the sprite work. And I do like that since we've been in darker environments, the game does ease up and give us something light. And there's a ton of different weapons here that you can collect, and you'll get them for about 20 seconds or so, but you will lose them if you die. But I love how this little beam gun here just kind of reflects around the stage as you can really work those angles and figure out what's going on, or you can end up dying. And this game is hard, you're going to die a lot, but the great thing is, is it gives you the ability to save and you can continue from where you left off. You're going to continue from where you died at that stage, but those upgrades, you're going to have to rework those again. But it's not the game that's going to insist on you beating it with just those four credits. Although that would kind of be the goal, is to get good enough at it so that you can see the ending on at least four credits, if not a 1cc condition. And this game gets even better with two players. If I had someone here to capture with me, I would 100% would have. But it's really a situation where you can kind of manage that screen space. One player takes the left hand side, one player takes the right hand side, and you kind of talk amongst yourselves as you're playing. And it just gets frantic. This game has such frenetic energy, always moving, always doing something, always seeing something. This is one of my favorite new Neo Geo games that's been developed. I played it a ton, not just for capture, but in my spare time, and I've always been having fun with it. And that's all I really care about with a new game for any platform. Do I want to keep coming back to it and do I want to keep playing it? I'll sit down and say I'm going to play for 20 minutes and an hour goes by. But the nice thing is you can just play for 20 minutes and walk away because it's that arcade style length and that's just what I love. And the great thing is you don't need to have a Neo Geo or a Neo Geo CD like I do. You can play the ROM on Mr. or this game is available on pretty much every modern platform including Steam. So you can try it anywhere. But of course this being a Neo Geo retrospective series, we're playing it on the hardware. And I love that suddenly these aliens, their blood is corrosive just like a movie that you might be thinking of when you play this game and that was a new pivot because that's not something you needed to worry about in a previous stage and that's the most fun part about this especially in your first playthrough there's new mechanics throughout of course you're still going to be running and gunning and dealing with all the screen space management but you're also going to be seeing new mechanics and new power-ups as well and the game stays fresh from start to finish once you get into later levels there's going to be some dead ends or there's going to be some areas you need to backtrack through so learning where things are is definitely going to help you on subsequent playthroughs knowing where to go and where not to go and it's just so much fun i love new Neo Geo development and getting something like this is just absolutely spectacular but as I said earlier the soundtrack is absolutely amazing so go ahead and listen one more time and I will be right back All the tracks are just great, and some of them sound slightly similar, but they have different things going on in them, and I just think it really fits the overall tone and image of this game. I think that's what I like the most about Xenocrisis, is the tone. It's got that Smash TV fun going on, but the alien environment, the gore effects, how everything is animated, 
it's just a ton of fun. Now, I will say this one charge weapon, I always find it difficult. I think if you see it, don't pick it up because you need to be really good with it. But that's the most fun part. You learn what weapons you like, you learn what playstyle you like, and you make the game fit you. And I do hope that they bring more games like this to Neo Geo. And I hope Bitmap Brothers keeps doing these things because they are absolutely nailing it when it comes to making Neo Geo content. And I love getting new Neo Geo games. And it's just so much fun to pop these two things on my shelf and be able to just increase my Neo Geo collection. But yeah, this is a bonus episode. I wanted to talk about one modern game, and Xeno Crisis made the cut. It was almost Last Hope Pink Bullets, but I decided to go with this instead. Short of that, leave me a comment down below, but I'll see you guys next time. I'm dead. Bye-bye.